afternoon, YouTube. Welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. Got another fun watch by Nubeo, and this is their Opportunity done in forged carbon. So this is a very unique watch. Uh, definitely one of the ones that I was digging through the box to find when they sent me all these 13 new watches. This watch is done in a full forged carbon case and part of the face, I'd say. They call it like a forged carbon face, but there's only a little bit of the, I would say the case that overhangs onto the face. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's kind of like playing with words, but very unique watch. Now I will state that based on a little test I did with just kind of scratching the underside, um, I think what they've done here is they've created a watch that's done in forged carbon. It makes it look like it's actually laminated, and I don't think it is. I think this case is all a white carbon, because when I scratched the white portion of it on the underside, kind of near the back of the case, um, it scratches right through to white. So that means that that forged carbon is all the way through. But I think what they've done is they've, they've plated this somehow with this kind of blue pattern. I'm not sure how this is applied. Um, I would think that this plating technique is probably very similar to what when you buy a plated stainless steel watch. Um, as far as the weight on this, it's a little bit lighter, but not much. You still have an automatic movement in there, a stainless steel back. Um, you're probably losing a little bit of weight due to the carbon, but you're also getting a very unique um, timepiece, right? I'm a little disappointed in and, and again, I, I don't mean to miss, if I am misspeaking, I apologize, but I did put a small scratch in on the blue surface on the back. And when I put that scratch in, it scratches through to white. So that to me, common sense, that tells me that this is a forged carbon case done in a white carbon. Uh, it's not actually laminated. And that's disappointing because I thought that this was like one piece which I guess it is, but I thought that the blue was like a blue carbon and laminated, and I'm just not seeing that just based on my test. Um, could be wrong. Uh, if Nubeo reaches out and says, hey, no, you made a mistake, by all means, I'll let you guys know. I'll put a little correction in the video or re-review -re the video. But from what I can tell, um, I don't think that this is laminated carbon. So, But it does appear to be a, a carbon case done in white. I don't know how they do that. Drop a comment if you know, but it is a very unique piece nevertheless. Uh, very, very ocean themed to me. Um, now, this is their space themed watch. It's uh, themed after the, uh, the original Opportunity, um, which I think was a some sort of space probe. Usually they're, they're themed after some kind of space satellites or space probes. Um, we're not gonna dig too much into that, but it's a very unique piece, blue and white. You know. When you have a lot of watches in your collection, you're always looking for something that's just going to be a little different. Uh, and I like to kind of accessorize my watches with what I'm wearing. And to me, when I picture this watch, I picture like middle of summer, blue jeans, white shirt, or like, you know, just something like, even if you were wearing, I don't know, like a white suit or something like that. I mean, that's pretty dressy. But even like wear white jeans, and you know, or, or maybe some white, um, you know, linen pants, walking on the beach with a sucker. It just has a very like, ocean themed vibe to me you know if that makes sense you know almost like a nautica voyage kind of kind of kind of vibe i don't know I, maybe i'm not making any sense but that's just what i get from it uh stainless steel bezel huge kind of like almost a turquoise blue uh pip it almost appears to be like a gemstone but it's not it's just some kind of um i don't know what they put on it you have a, also you have sort of a pip at the six o'clock position it is a unidirectional rotating bezel uh you know solid no back play i mean a lot of this stuff you know, when you've done 1,400 YouTube videos, uh, not, again, not all watch reviews, but a lot of them watch reviews, you know, you kind of say the same things. But I know when you folks come to this channel and check out these videos, sometimes you might just have only seen this one video. So I like to talk about, you know, the bezel action. Some folks say, you know, watches aren't luxury brands. They have sloppy bezels. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, this bezel's tighter than a lot of Seikos I've seen. Uh, and again, modern Seikos are probably a lot better, but just remember a name does not determine quality, right? You have to take each watch at face value, get it in your hands and check it out, right? Um, this does have silicone, which, you know, on this watch, I don't really think there's any other option. I think this is perfect white silicone on this. It looks great. Um, now, if they would have done a carbon bracelet, blue and white, that would have been even better. I'm, I'm more of, I'm not really into the silicone or the rubber straps. Don't get me wrong, I still wear them, but I always prefer something that's a little more solid. Um, you know, stainless steel bracelets, even a plated bracelet, I think would look killer on this. But it looks fantastic. I and mean, this kind of reminds me of a watch I bought years ago in blue and white. It was the full size 58 millimeter 
Sea Hunter limited edition done with that kind of gunmetal blue and white. Uh, very, I don't know, just has that summer vibe to me. Um, so this reminds me of that, and it's a lot more wearable. Of course, fist 60 millimeter watch, uh, 73 with the crown protector on an Invicta. It's huge. I don't always wear those watches much anymore. Um, I still wear them, don't get me wrong, but as my collection's gotten bigger and bigger, there's more watches for me to find wrist time for. So, I, you know, they don't get as much wrist time as they used to. Um, that's bound to happen when your collection gets larger, but still a lot of fun. And it's nice to have one that's a little bit smaller that gives me that same kind of vibe. Automatic movement, let's talk checkboxes. Uh, has a sapphire lens, that is a checkbox for a lot of folks. Uh, what is the quality materials? You have 316 stainless steel and forged carbon. I mean, you have great quality materials. Uh, nice huge buckle on the silicone straps. 20 millimeters in uh, lug width, which is really strange to me because if you look at this, just kind of keep this in mind, I like to mention this, because if you buy this watch, if you ever, ever have a problem with the silicone, right? I've heard horror stories. Can't speak to New Bayo having that issue, but I've seen it before. Not personally with a Victor or any other. I've had, seen it with a Sterling watch before. But um, if you have a bracelet or a, a band fail on this, this lug width is, it may be 20 millimeter lug width, but the way that this attaches is right in the middle. You're going to have a hard time finding a strap. You could get it from New Bayo, I'm sure, but... Let's just say Nubeo goes out of business or Nubeo stops making the strap. You are going to be with a, you know, expensive paperweight, right? So just kind of keep that in mind uh, when you buy watches like this. Again, I don't want to plant the seed that like, hey, this is going to fail on you. Um, I haven't had any of my watches fail. No Invictus, only that one. The only problems I've had with any of my watches in my collection are I shattered the lens on a sentimental watch of mine. Um, I've... Uh, I got one Invicta Grand Diver that the back was cross-threaded. I should have returned it. I didn't. It was a defect. It does uh, fog up in the shower. So I only took it in the shower once. Now I just commit myself. I got so many other watches. I don't need to wear that watch. If I know I'm going to get wet somewhere, I just don't wear that one. It's not a big deal to me. But it is a defect. And then a Sterling watch. That, that, that silicone strap actually disintegrated without even wearing it. So my Invictas haven't had that problem. None of my new Bayos. But it is something that I do want Nubeo to think a little bit about when they're designing these in the future. Think about the future. Think about your customer 20 years down the road. And I like to do that because if you buy this watch and 20 years down the road, it probably will still work. It's still going to look great. What happens to the strap? You know, That's why I kind of gravitate more towards uh, bracelet watches. But again, I still wear these. It's easier for me because I'm not paying for them, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. I would love to have seen this done with standard lug widths. Do what you got to do with the strap because this basically strap kind of blends into the side because it's, it's larger than the actual uh, lugs, right? And so you can still do that, but make the bracelets, I think 22 millimeter for a lug to lug. Um, you can still, again, through design, get your look with the silicone strap, but give people the ability to throw it on a standard 22 millimeter strap should they want to change it up down the road or should it fail? So just my two cents. They'll either listen or not. Uh, you have that open heart, which is really cool. That's where you see the balance wheel kind of chugging away in there. absolutely love open heart watches. I like them a lot more than Skeleton because you still get to see, uh, you know, a nice clean dial with the Nubeo branding on there. Um, there is a little bit of kind of a skeletonized window there. You can see into the movement a little bit. It's very subtle, but the balance wheel is really the nicest looking part in my opinion, of an automatic movement. And so I really like to see that chugging away. Um, I don't think there's a watch I have in my collection, whether it's Chronograph, whatever the watch brand is, no matter what it looks like, that I, I wouldn't like to see an open heart on it, right? I just think it's really cool on an automatic watch to be able to see that gyrating away. It's the prettiest part of a movement. It's cool to show it off. Um, exhibition window on the back, it's a small one. It's tinted. It's large enough to see the rotor. Uh, but they do do this kind of like this, like, light blue like furnace blue tint on there with the this is themed after the opportunity there's like a stick figure of that a loose connection to the opportunity but still you know they that's kind of what they do uh some of their comparisons are better than others um it is what it is i would like to have seen this watch um you know i i don't know it's just my opinions it would be kind of cool to see this watch more of like in their c category this color combination right they have enough automatics they could have just kept the automatics in the the Opportunity Automatic, under the space theme variations, uh, how they always do, but this to me just really screams 
nautical, right? So they probably could have kicked this over to the C. And who knows, they might make a few changes and make this part of their C category as well. But overall, very cool watch. You have that screw down crown, all the specs are there, the quality's there, and it's just definitely unique. And when we have a lot of stainless steel watches in our collection, it's really great to make some additions that are different and unique, right? Uh, which I absolutely love. So 48 millimeter case diameter, 17.9 in case thickness. It's a big, thick donut on your wrist. 30 ATMs of water resistance, which is fantastic. Again, sapphire lens, 20 millimeter silicone strap, I think is really misleading because you're not gonna put any 20 millimeter silicone strap on here. You're really looking at something that is proprietary and very unique to this watch. So just kind of keep that in mind. But right out of the box, it's killer, and I'm sure it'll last a really long time. Without further ado, let's throw it on the wrist. I weigh 180 pounds, I'm five foot eight, and this is what this watch looks like on a guy my size, my height, and my weight. Uh, it is a real summer looker. And again, it would have been nice if they were to have that forged carbon layered, but I don't know, you know what goes into making something like this. I don't know um, how difficult it is to work with this type of material, but um, you know, you're still getting that layered look, which is you know still pretty cool. And I'll tell you, the you know the plating techniques that all these companies are using nowadays, I get the kind of the same question a lot with the Invicta watches. Hey, how's the gold holding up? And I mean, my Invictas are like over 12 years old now, and uh, a lot of them. And the, the same thing with the Aragons, Bulvas. The the plating all looks great. The plating looks as good now as it does the day I got it. Now, if you're a guy who constantly wears one watch every single day of your life and uses the hell out of it, I don't know what the plating is gonna look like, right? But I can tell you that my watches do get worn. They may not get worn every single day because they get rotated, but every single watch I have, the plating looks great, whether it's plated with blue, iridium, whatever the case, and I've been very impressed uh, with the Nubeo plating as well. I've had no issues with any of this stuff. So add it to your collection, let me know what you think. If you do want to add it, use my coupon code, use my link, and do let me know when you make a purchase. I love hearing about it. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a fantastic day, and take care.